Oh, good morning. A couple people have um, shown some interest in this game here. Uh, one, because I kind of pushed it on them, because I think they're going to really like it. Um, and it's going to take a while for me to get a review of this game, because there's a lot of game here, um, which I'll kind of tell you about. I've just, I've, I've read the rulebook a couple of times. Um, it's fun for me. It's called Crusoe's Planet. And really what's going on in the game or the subject matter or the I guess it's it's really themed in this in this case it's not really subject matter the subject matter is economic systems and um so in the game you're going to have a you're going to be able to play a number of different scenarios um and I'm just doing the simple ones right now which are if you look over here I keep skipping it sorry I'm doing tribal capitalism, which is kind of the most simple and most common sort of, there we go, tribal capitalism in the sort of games that we play um, in other games. Um, but really what this game does, and why I say it has a lot of game, is because one of the most things that's interesting about games to me is it will give you, um, different games will give you different ways that, that uh, groups of people can interact. Uh, different different social uh, social configurations, and so each of the different economic systems creates a different uh, social configuration. Um, so how the game works is it's roll and move, but it's it's roll and move in a, in a fun way. I think it really works for this. Um, you you deal out cards, and th this is the base game. That you know different scenarios will do different things. You deal out these cards, which just gives you the turn order, and then the players are going to roll and move on these different tracks and they decide on their different tracks and the tracks are kind of like different sorts of occupations um, so different tracks will will get you different things but no track will well no track will get you everything you need I don't think you kind of you there has to be some negotiation and some trade uh, involved so then when you get to the market here there's going to be some sort of trade happening based on um, based on the, the economic system you're using. So in tribal capitalism, it's very simple. It's like if if Lefty has something that um, Brezzo wants, then they can trade. Um, it's, it's set up so that if you get to uh, a track first, or if more, more than one person is on a track, it penalizes both people on the track. Um, so, and some of the tracks seem better than others so that you really got to get some trade happening there's also some interesting situations like um, one of the big food sources here are these speared fish but in order to get speared fish you have to have spears and the spears you get on this track okay oh and one thing I forgot to mention is if you're on a the more times you go down a track the better you are in deciding where you move on that track because you can add or subtract numbers as you get experience at a particular job so there's there's a reinforcer for staying in your job. Um, so anyway, the spears and the speared fish, you got to have spears to get the the speared fish if you land there. So normally, if you if you had a spear and you landed here, you could get five fish, which is quite a bit. Um, so one of the interesting things about this is so there's there's cert, there's like kind of four. Well, three different areas you got to be thinking about in terms of your own survival. No, four. Four. Um, one is leisure, okay? Uh, and leisure, if you have at least two, you're going to get a positive. You want to get at least one. You want some sort of like meaning to your life, right? Otherwise, you just get negative points. And then you have um, you have to have water, right? And that's the basic thing. And water's kind of scarce um, because these these tents here these are a limit. Um, and then you also want food. Now you you need at least three units of food here to avoid getting some massive penalty and being hungry or starving or dying. Um, but you also want to have multiple food types or you'll be malnourished. So you need to have a protein and a fruit, um, and the proteins are fish and eggs. And then you know the more different types of foods you eat, the better it is for you. So that also helps ensure that there's there's a reason to trade. Um, so we're on the second turn right now. I can just tell you a little bit about what happened. Oh, and the the final one. I keep for, sorry. Um, the final one is these radio signals. So the game lasts, I think, nine turns. Yep, nine turns. 
and then if you're not rescued by then everyone loses <laughs> so you need to you need to collect these radio si signals but the problem with these radio signals especially in tribal capitalism is that uh, they're a public good so if you get them it's just good for everyone you can't trade radio signals for anyone so you kinda if you're going down this track the firefly track it's the big radio signal track you really gotta rely on someone to just feed you um, there's a few spaces where you can get some bananas and water but even that, you know, is going to make you malnourished. So that's kind of an interesting situation too. So there's all these little interesting situations. There's also diamonds, which are only give you points if you if you make it out, um, which are you know that's fun too. So that's a little bit about this game. I'm not going to do a playthrough or anything, but I just wanted to kind of give an overview. Um, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit more about what it has in store. Uh, when you get into the advanced rules, there's commodity markets and taxing and wholesale. Um, you can also, in all of them, you can have violence. Um, so you can resort to violence if you want in order to get what you want, uh, which is maybe useful if you go down the spear track and no one's trading you for spears. Though, you know, if you have a, an, an intelligent group, it seems like someone's going to want to trade you for spears because that gets a big food source, the fish, which everyone needs, um, into into the uh, into the pot there. Um, there are interesting uh, really unbalanced scenarios like the traditional economy this is more like medieval times so there's this strict hierarchy in um, in terms of who gets what track and I don't think you can change tracks I haven't done the traditional economy yet um, and there's a certain hierarchy where like if someone up above you needs something you kind of have to give it to them <laughs> It's kind of like that. So you can, I mean, you can really explore all these different ex economies and um, how it how it kind of prompts people to interact. You know, because we we oftentimes are a product of the systems we're in. Right, we're we're in games, um, and this is a great game to show that, and also just learn learn about economics. So I highly recommend this right now. Um, I really can't see any problem with it. Um, any reason why I it's gonna I'm gonna change my mind about the game it seems like there's a lot of good stuff in it and here's the pieces I put them in this container leisure fish a lot of cutting I got my wife to do the cutting I, I made some deal with her um, I did the folding myself though so I'm pretty proud of that